from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster that's here to get help you get in a bit, get, get into, I can't even say it, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, it's time for the podcaster who tried to say, get into it, yeah. But uh, I tried to find out something. I stumbled over my words. Uh, so whether you're getting ready for bed, you're tumbling into bed, you're stumbling into bed, or you're already in bed getting cozy, you're starting to run that bedtime routine and ease your way down, or you just need someone, or your first time here, and you're like, what in the hey, hey, hey? Uh, well, it's time for the podcaster that's here to help you as you get into bed, yeah? It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about uh, sleep phones, the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me. They're uh, little uh, speakers or uh, earbuds. They're, they don't have earbuds poking you in your ears. They're these flat uh, felt things in a soft, stretchy headband. So comfortable. They're way more comfortable than I am at describing their comfort. And you can get one with the Sleep With Me logo, Sleep With My Boyfriend, tons of other cool things. Uh, sleep With Me branded sleep phones, the only place you can get them is by using our link. Uh, you have to use this link, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones. And then if you use sleep with me at checkout, you'll get five bucks off your order. So you'll support the show and you'll be listening to it in comfort. They have uh, three different versions uh, or four different versions now, uh, one with corded and a bunch of wireless versions. So anyway, you listen to sleep with me. I also use it for running, try on planes, uh, hotel rooms, unbelievably comfortable. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use our promo code sleep with me at checkout for five dollars off at sleep with me podcast.com slash sleep phones thanks everybody all right everybody it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor better help sleep with me podcast is sponsored by better help online therapy better help wants to tackle some of the stigmas around mental health you might think that therapy is for other people but utilizing therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you it means you recognize that all of us, all human beings have emotions and we need to learn to understand them, not avoid them. You know, some people might think that you have to wait until things are really, really tough, almost unbearable to try therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get bad and it can help you avoid those lows. I use therapy on a weekly basis. It's a huge part of my self-care, my well-being and how I can have my relationships with other people people in all aspects of my life flourish. I get those tools I need to make my life manageable before I hit a road bump or a speed pot, a pothole. Uh, because of therapy, I'm ready when that happens. Uh, and BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. And Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleepwithme. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast in each here is where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's how we're able to be here for you free twice a week. I'm really looking for people who have supported the sponsors and spread the word about it, shared it on social media. Make sure to fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors and let me know about it. Let them know about it so I can be here for 
for you. Free choice a week. That's the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need. There's links to resources uh, you could connect with right now in the show notes if you need them. International resources. It's also about being a supporter and a member of our communities. And that means taking action to say Black Lives Matter, to say stop AAPI hate. And there's links to organizations and resources that you could connect with to learn more or to take more action in our show notes. And the third part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is organizations that have supported you or that you support. And as I look of what I'm going to support in 2022, I want to know more. I want to know what organizations have supported you or that you support on a regular a regular basis. So let me know about those. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? This posty poster song sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story, yeah. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, you can still get your sleep phones. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use Sleep With Me to get a sweet discount on those Sleep With Me branded sleep phones. Uh, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me podcast that puts you to sleep we do it with a bedtime story all you need to do is get in bed and turn out the lights and press play i'm gonna do the rest what i'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake it could be thoughts you know things on your mind uh, that you're thinking about past present future It could be physical sensations uh, that you're feeling or something coming up emotionally. It could be changes in your time, your temperature, your routine. Things, you know, things, they they happen. And it's not, not, everybody says it should be easy, and it's not. Uh, It's not always easy. Even if it's easy, you could say that... uh, you're having trouble getting to sleep. Let's just be, or you're saying, hey, I'm looking for some comfort. Like, uh, I mean, it's not even easy for me to talk, as you can see sometimes. So whatever it is that's keeping you awake, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of it as you drift off. And the way I propose to do that, to help you fall asleep, to send you to sleep, uh, to keep you company, is I have a safe place here. Or there, set aside. I'm smoothing it, I'm patting it, I'm rubbing it down. I'm stepping away. I'm using pot, like a relaxing body language, really, even now, opening my hands and saying, there's a safe place for you to go check out. And then I'm giving you the space to check it out at your leisure or to send it over. This is one of those safe places I want you to imagine that you have, like, a, this is a little bit dreamy. Uh, but whether you're you're ready to participate physically or mentally or just passively, this new version of the safe place that I just invented right now, it's a slidable, transferable safe place. And I'm picturing in my head one of those uh, hooks that people use usually when someone's performing on stage and they say, hey, come off stage, it's not working out. But this one, it's... Uh, it's made from a little bit more like a, a gelatinous, uh, kind of n- sticky, but not sticky. Like one of those things you, like that you used to get, uh, it was like a frog's tongue. It was uh, like, I don't know, stretchy, and you could use it to pick up paper. 
but this one's not, it's virtual, though it could be real. And you could use it to bring the safe place to you. So you could flick it or you could pull or you could just mentally watch the safe place come to you wherever you want it. You see, and it could be moved later. Like those furniture slidey things. Uh, you say, don't worry, we could slide it right over here if you want. Oh, I could, it could go upstairs, uh, virtually moves from the, through the walls and stuff. Uh, then what I'll do, or part of that process, is I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So I go off topic. I get mixed up. Then I uh, like kind of use extra words unintentionally, sometimes intentionally double back, all that stuff to take your mind off something and keep you company. Now, if you're new or you're, you're somewhat newish to the podcast or you're looking at it through new eyes or new ears, or even if you've listened to a thousand episodes, hey, I got a couple of things I want to remind you about. Uh, most important thing is you. You're important and your sleep is important. And the fact of the matter is you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you can rest and get comfortable and drift off. That is the truth. And you deserve a bedtime routine and a bedtime you could at least feel neutral about, if not look forward to. Because sometimes, a lot of times, I have the other the other side of that for me. And if I can counter that uh, or lead you to something else that will help, that's really important to me. Because one, the truth is, it's important that you you get that you you deserve it, and if you get the rest you need, you have something to wind down with and take your mind off of stuff and keep you company. Your life's going to be more manageable tomorrow, and that makes our world and your world a better place to live in. And if it improves even more, and you can flourish, what th that benefits the entire planet. It really does. So that's one thing. Oh, the other side is I know how it feels in the deep, dark night. So that's another reason why it's important to me. Now, this podcast does not work for everybody. It's very different. All I can ask is what thousands and thousands and thousands of people have told me. Give the show a few tries. It takes a couple tries to get used to because it is so different. And if you feel skeptical or frustrated or doubtful, See if you could still give it a few tries and say, well, let me just see how this goes. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. But that's really like hundreds of thousands of listeners have said, at first, I disliked the podcast. At first, I was like, what is this? And then after two or three tries, I realized, uh, oh, I could lower my guard a little bit because this doesn't even make any sense. The show never gets started, never goes anywhere, and it's always going somewhere. And it, like it's always running, it's kind of a contradiction. So if you're skeptical or doubtful or feeling strongly, yeah, that's uh, understandable. Give the show a few tries. Or if you're already like, yo, this ain't for me, check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. It has a list of other sleep podcasts and sleepy audio you could check out for free. All that stuff's for free too. So there's that. Uh, uh, so you're important, your sleep's important. Oh, this podcast doesn't work for everybody. A couple of things you, you probably want to know if you're new or be reminded of if you're a regular listener is uh, the stuff that throws people off. So one, this is a podcast you, you don't really listen to, but you can listen to it, uh, which is a little bit strange to hear. Uh, but yeah, you can barely, it's, <laughs> that's funny. That's like a double, this podcast is a little bit strange to hear anyway. So it's a podcast as you develop a relationship with it. And even as we go walk through this deep, dark night together, if you're a regular listener, yeah, sometimes you might want me walking at your side talking to you. Sometimes you might want to lie down on the path and take a nap while I walk around. Sometimes we might even be walking in closer company. And then sometimes you say, Scoots, like, I'm just going to listen to you. You walk, uh, I don't need you that, like, uh, I just need to hear your voice, uh, and sometimes you might even, you say, like, uh, so uh, see how it goes. Oh, but, but this is a podcast you don't really listen to, need to listen to, but you could. And, and that kind of goes with, like, I'll be here to the very end, whether you're awake or asleep, because this podcast also does not put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company 
while you fall asleep. I'm here more to be your companion in the deep, dark night, or as this walking together metaphor goes, uh, to, to be, be, keep you company while you drift off, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar bud, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your boar bra, your boar burr, your neighbor, to be your boar friend. And, uh, so that kind of means one, you don't need to listen to me and kind of, you just kind of eventually fall asleep, uh, or drift off. You never know. You, you wake up the next day, you say, was I, did I fall asleep during that podcast? Was it running all night? Uh, did I set a sleep timer? Oh, let me try this tomorrow night. So those are two things that can be hard, but if you can't sleep or you need the show during the day, don't worry. Even though you don't have to listen to me, you can. And I'll be here. I'm here. I'm working hard on this episode from the beginning to the end so that it feels free and easy. And that's so you don't need to listen, but you could listen. So those are a couple things. The other thing that can really throw new listeners off, even some long-term listeners, is the structure of the show, which kind of aligns with the goals of, of the podcast, uh, So the show starts off with a greeting, uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I try to say something funny or witty, not always success. Well, not always successful, sometimes occasionally successfully. And that's so you feel seen, you feel greeted and welcomed in. And you say, okay, this show is also a little bit silly and goofy. And maybe even at the first, you say, okay, this sense person's sense of humor is, uh, it's humor like, uh, they have a sense of humor. They have a sense of what humor is. I don't know if they have a sense of humor, a sense of humor, uh, the sense, or how about this one? Sense of humor. Have I come out with that as a fall collection yet? Sense of humor, uh, my fall collection, uh, not appearing at any department store we know of, but in my imagination. So uh, there's a greeting. Then there's support for the show and for listeners and the communities around the show. And the support for the show meets our goals, uh, my goals, I guess. The podcast comes out twice a week for free. Episodes are over an hour. And now, like, because of people that support the sponsors and stuff, we have over 350 free episodes in the feed versus like 200 last year. So those are the goals around the show. Support makes that possible. Then there's uh, intro. And sometimes if people get the intro and the support mixed up, I guess understandably if you're new. So the intro goes from, I don't know, minute six or minute eight to minute 20 uh, or so. It's like 10 to 20 minutes long. It's me explaining what the podcast is uh, for new listeners, but it, taking 12 to 20 minutes to do so might seem at first glance or first listen or your fifth listen kind of pointless or, uh, I don't know. It, it, people that don't like it really don't like it. But all I can tell you is the intro serves at one purpose, uh, to tell new people about the show. It serves another purpose as like a friendly reminder to the regular listener. Oh, this is how the structure of the show is. This is Scoots. Uh, every single time he makes a new intro because he knows, even though he's giving out the same basic information, well, he knows he'll never successfully do it in the same way again, but also that that variety is what's important because Scoots is here to keep me company every episode and not just one episode. He's not here to put me to sleep one time with a one-time fix. This is about being your companion and friend in the deep, dark night. I guess it's like an LTR or something, like a long-term sleepy relationship. Uh, So that's one part of the intro. But the more important part of the intro, and again, you could listen to the show in another way. There's listeners that 2% of listeners skip the intro. Two or 3,000 people listen to story-only episodes on Patreon. And I'm sure there's there's a small percentage of listeners that fall asleep as soon as the podcast starts or during the intro. But for most listeners, and this aligns with all the information I've got over the years about sleep, is that uh, the intro is part of a wind-down routine, a wind-down process. But let's not view it like that. Uh, It's a special time, really the wind-down routine for me when it's working well. 
is a magical time. Uh, and if you take 15 to 20 minutes uh, to wind down or a half hour listening to this podcast as you're getting ready for bed and as you're doing something else relaxing, we're just chilling out. I mean, recently I've been just lying on my floor next to Koa's bed, my dog's bed, and maybe listening to a meditation or writing or just lying there looking at the ceiling that's an important part about getting a good night's sleep is having that special routine. So the goal is that the podcast is one part of that wind down routine because it gives you some separation. It eases you into bedtime between the day and all of that stuff uh, in the time you want to be asleep. And so the intro is part of that progression so that's the intro. It ends, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes in the show. Then there's more support for the show. And that support, again, is what makes it possible for the show to come out twice a week for free on any podcast app you want. And the shows are over an hour. So that's what makes that possible. And then there'll be a story. Tonight it'll be our newest story, which I don't even quite have a working title I'm happy about, but it'll be the first episode of an ongoing episodically modular series with a touch of seriality. And I, I don't know, like some of the titles, I've been the big ones, uh, big emojis, uh, the big emojis, uh, the emojis. Uh, still trying to figure out if emojis is something I can use uh, in a title. So, um, but yeah, it won't be... It'll be, it's not really about emojis, just as a heads up, uh, it's more, that's more of like a reusage of the word. Anyway, uh, big emojis, maybe that's it. I don't know. I, I mean, that kind of fits big emojis. I think we just stumbled on the working title at least. So big emojis, big emojis is, I think that's it. So that's great. Thank you so much for your help by listening to me. So that's the, the, the oh that the, so that's the structure show. The show ends with thank yous and good nights. Uh, that's just been something we've done all along because without listener support and action, that's really what what I mean. That's how I'm able to do this. Uh, so so lucky to be able to do this. Tell a story about the big emojis and keep you company because that's what's important, right? Uh, I've been there, tossing to you know uh, yeah so. All I can say is I'm glad you're here. If you're new, just give the show a few tries. You, you, there's nothing to lose. Uh, now, I understand some of you might have stronger frustration than others. Yeah, check out the stuff at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. But I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate your time. And uh, here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about my constant companion, my air doctor. I got it running in my bedroom, right at the foot of my bed, running all night long. Upstairs, I got the air doctor going when I'm working from home. I got the air doctor going in my daughter's room because I want clean air. I want peace of mind that I never have to worry about what's in this air. Is there contaminants? Is there germs? Is there dander, dust, allergens? And that's why you got to check out air doctor. You know, you breathe 20,000 breaths a day. An air Air Doctor filters out those dangerous contaminants so your lungs don't have to. Air Doctor has an ultra HEPA filter independently tested to remove 99.99% of tested bacteria and viruses plus allergens. Like I said, pollen, dust, smoke. And in a recent independent study, the Air Doctor 3000 series was tested and proven to remove 99.97% of the live SARS-CoV-2 virus in a test chamber. And while no air purifier can prevent the transmission of COVID, it prevents provides me and my family with peace of mind. I know it's backed by science and rigorous third-party testing. The Air Doctor captures particles as small as 0 0.003 microns in size. That's 100 times smaller than the HEPA standard. And it's powerful. The classic purifier can circulate the air in a 630 square foot plus room four times an hour. And a professional quality HEPA air purifier is recommended by leading medical experts as an effective way to reduce airborne germs and viruses and protect your home. Make sure you get an 
an Air Doctor to keep you and your family safe this winter. Air Doctor comes with a no questions asked, a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. And just go to airdoctorpro.com and use a promo code SLEEP, and you'll receive a 35% discount on their classic Air Doctor 3000 purifier. That's the one I got. That's right, 35% off, but only if you use SLEEP. You got to go to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use that promo code SLEEP. AirDoctorPro.com and use a promo code SLEEP. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here. This is our episodically modular uh, series. It's pretty new. So new, in fact, this is for the second episode, but I forgot to record it. So now I'm recording the first and second episode ones back, or the second and third episodes back to back, because I'm recording the third episode tomorrow. But this is so far in episode two. In episode one, oh, what's an episodically modular series? It's a bedtime story you could fall asleep to, but the nice thing is it's a story. You could listen to them in any order. They're related, similar characters you could get familiar with uh, and, uh, you know, comforting and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, if you, you say, oh, I like some interconnection. But this way, if, if this is your fifth episode, you say, oh, boy, these are prequels or, you know, related. You say this is like one where you saw a movie and then you saw like a, a limited edition series, episode, this episodically modular with a touch of seriality, it does it just fine by me. And despite some confusion on my part about what this was going to be titled, it is about uh, uh, big emojis and big ones, but it's really about our, our the Spice Friends. Now, not the kind of spice they have on Arrak- Arrakis. You say Arrakis, I say Arrakis, so let's not make a ruckus about it. But, uh, so, okay, so what's the series about? It's, it features two characters right now, two main players. Uh, they're working together, so don't worry if they're not in opposition. Uh, President, uh, well, what you would call President Willow Smith, uh, she's kind of president of the world, more or less, or the head of the uh, cooperative nations, and she's been doing this just fine trying to manage the, you know, the cooperative nations of the world. Cooperate, cooperations, cooperations or something. And President uh, Smith, uh, she uh, had been vice president of the United States with her father. And then, you know, life changed. And, but now she's once again president this time or head of the cooperative nations. She's a great leader. Also, we have an astronaut, uh, an astronaut that had just returned to Earth. Uh, thus far, only known as the astronaut, I believe. And the astronaut had left Earth many, many years ago. Not that different of a timeline than we're, when we're talking now, I think. Maybe a little bit after. Oh, this is a this is not a, a um, fact based report, but the astronaut went to another place called Planet Zipper in search of answers uh, because our world had been dealing with these big ones. Uh, and when I say big ones, you've probably seen them in movies before. Big beings walking around, stomping on stuff, putting their hot breath on things. Some are lizards, some are dragons, some, uh, you know, other beings, uh, uh, mammals even. And uh, they they caused a big ruckus here on Earth uh, and pretty unpleasant. But then the people of Planet Zipper, well, one, they got them all on an island, Big One's Atoll, they called it. And then the the beings from Planet Zipper, somehow from outer space, they put all of the big ones into hibernation. Now, meanwhile, this astronaut was headed to Planet Zipper to figure out how does Planet Zipper deal with big ones? Ends up it's an intergalactic type problem. And so the big ones have been hibernating for some time, but they're getting close to waking up. And so, obviously, as the head of planet, as the head of the, as our planetary leader, Willow wants to say, "What are we going to do when these big ones wake up?" Uh, 
we're waiting for this expert from uh, outer space to come from outer space, from Earth that went to outer space, come back after consulting with Planet Zipper and give us the info. But so far, the info they returned with was like, hey, we got to um, make a children's show and just trust me, we're going to manifest a solution, which to a president, you know, who's accountable to, I would assume, voters or something or some sort of election or, you know, process to become the leader. She said, well, I'm looking for more of a clear-cut solution here. We've got these giant beings that are going to start walking around on stuff again. And we've never found a way to deal with them other than with extreme measures. And even then, it didn't work so hot until Planet Zipper put them all to sleep. But this, the astronaut said, don't worry. You just have to have trust me. Just have some faith. We're going to get this worked out. Talk about bedtime material. You say, well, you got a giant problem? Don't worry. It's all going to work out just fine. So I guess on this episode next, we're going to find out how fine it'll work out uh, with another episode of uh, Spice Friends. Uh, And here is our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, Thank you, Scooter. The ladies, the gentlemen, the boys, the girls, the friends beyond the binary. It's time. For an adventure, another adventure with our spice friends. Ah, spicy. Oof, Antonio, I mean, that could be a, call a chip company or a some sort of company that you're hired. Uh, oh, you, you, I mean, because you could get, you probably, I wonder if they would pay me and then I could pay you. Because since it's my audio, technically, even though you're volunteering for the love of sleep, you know, love of your scooter, I do this for the love of people who are falling asleep. I know you do. Also for the love of practicing stillness, which I have you do most of the time while you're in my presence. You being still is a present to me, Antonio. Thanks. This is Mr. Antonio Banderas, and this is Spice Friends, everybody. All right, I guess I've decided to record a journal for you. Uh, you told me you were recording one for me, and uh, I don't know, I've just been really impressed. And I know, and I, well, no, I don't know. I, I understand your hesitancy and your dismay. And can I just say how starstruck I was just meeting you? I remember listening to some of your music um, on on the flight, but uh, in your family. But but that is aside, not what I was starstruck. It was uh, something in the way you carried yourself, in your eyes, and in, in the, your face, uh, your determination. Your focus, uh, that's where your dismay came and your disbelief because of your driven caring. Uh, and I, I don't know, I, I just, uh, I was taken aback by it. And, and I do find myself uh, in a position where I was looking at it and saying, well, maybe I came in a little too, you know, came in on a rocket uh, that looked like a comet. I came in a little too hot. But I wouldn't say hot. I'd say uh, my confidence blinded me to need to stay soft and open. And I guess I needed to have my own course correction forced on me. which is somewhat of a space travel metaphor. So let me see. Like, uh, of course, I, I sh- should have been softer and realized that the idea that uh, the joy of dance and song in the whole manifestation theory, it's again, that's only the way I can explain it because it is, I don't understand it either. I'm asking you to take uh, on something that I don't understand, right? Uh, How could the big ones have been formed and manifested? Manifestation's always been something that people would say is gaga goo goo. 
and it's just a word because I don't know other word to say. Created, uh, came, but where did they come from? They they appeared on Earth uh, or in the sea. So did they come? There are no scientific theories that can explain. Oh no, there's some place in the center of the Earth they all live. And they come out from time to time. We don't have any scientific theories that said, oh, for sure, they came from other worlds. I would say the fact that the big ones who were on planet Zipper, different big ones and some the same, uh, makes this manifestation theory hold up uh, because we don't have any proof of them traveling interstellar in an interstellar manner. Also, I guess I'm just not an expert on it. I don't know about it. And talking about it, I have trouble believing because I'm trying to manifest a solution or start the train moving. I guess I just don't have... I wish Planet Zipper, they didn't don't really think in metaphors and similes and st- st- their stuff to explain. And a lot of that I've lost uh, uh, or tried to forget about. So where are we? I asked you to trust me, and I don't think you're sure about that. I don't think you do. And I I was confident that you would come around and that you would see very quickly. I would quickly deliver results. And I also thought we'd have a little bit more time together. And again, I also had to catch up with everything that was happening with the companies we established through the Planet Zipper plan. And, uh, yeah, so where should I start with this journal? Just in case you're listening or anybody else is listening. Maybe they need to hear my side of it uh, right now. I guess I'm unfocused, and I guess that's okay. Of course, who wouldn't be? The soul thinks about saying yes, right? Uh, saying yes to your doubt, saying yes to my doubt and my mistakes, uh, and now saying yes to the fact that I just feel a little bit uh, fogged out. So what, what I can counter is like uh, we met. Uh, I tried to convince you to set aside the how. We know the why. Save the world, uh, uh, but the, the how and the why of that how, or the the like those hows and whys to set aside, and and it's probably asking a bit too much. And so the next thing was to start a test. I met with the writers, I met with the team, who also had no idea. Uh, really what was at stake, you know, other than this launch of uh, the first show and that. Uh, so they were a bit confused now. I did, uh, the, the, like, uh, but they said, okay, who? why wouldn't we have uh, the astronauts be a part of it? And, and then there was a lot of debate in the room. And again, these were some of the top... Uh, writers uh, and show it was an amazing team that was put together and I, I, I you know I have done being an astronaut is collaborative it's a different type of collaboration but on zipper and on the way back uh, I was preparing for this so there was debate of whether I would appear as myself or as the astronaut and again, I thought that was a bit of a distraction. I said, it's okay, uh, we'll figure that out. But the primary objective with this new launch of this new show, again, the, the, again, the, the, I mean, Planet Zipper and the, the ability for, for you and everyone else to have funded this, it was going to be a very popular program. You know, we would have to deliver to sustain the audience, but the marketing had already been done through the serials, through other... We were set up. We had a built-in audience ready to go, an audience of children and parents, but uh, that's the audience we were aiming for. And, you know, I'll be honest in recording this, there were some setbacks, uh, and they were setbacks that I caused as the leader, uh, and you know, we had our goals. Uh, 
Um, again, like, uh, it, and, and the show was supposed to be evocative of a spirit of play where children feel safe to play freely, right? Where they have fun, where children have a shorter memory. They scrape their knee. Ideally, they feel those feelings or, or you know, they metaphorically scrape their knee and they move on. They let things go. And a lot of the work, uh, again, was a uh, great collaborative effort uh, to, to kind of help the children understand what it means to fully feel and, and all those things. And, and again, it, the timing was right with this project and the mission was right because it was an intense time to be a child or a human being. And again, while while the, the, the executive team was tracking things, they said, yeah, there's a lot of adults that get a lot out of uh, what we're building towards. And this also added to my confidence initially after our first conversation, my confidence went down a tiny bit, but then seeing all the amazing people we'd be working with and hearing the excitement, uh, hearing their excitement to be working on this at such a time, all that. Uh, and again, we also had, we were also aligned with some of the backup plans, uh, and I didn't think we'd need to do them. And, you know, the back of plans of, uh, uh, that you've been working on, which we'll talk about, but I guess any backup plan can't prepare you. Even I, you know, I traveled to another world uh, that we didn't even think was possible and returned to earth. I'd seen things that I couldn't even explain, but, uh, Nothing can prepare you for when the, the things start to come in from the reports start to come in of stirring on a big, big ones a toll. And, uh, you know, that was kept uh, very close to the vest, but it quickly spread. And, of course, those are constantly false reports and true reports, but this one was finally true. And then it was determined that moth breath was the big one that was stirring, which was not on anyone's radar. Moth breath was always kind of one of the big ones that people, I don't know, they say, well, it's just moth breath. Uh, of course, you know, people that experience moth, moth, moth breath, moth, you know, mothing or breathing uh, have a different story. But, and the fact that that was who was awakening and again, you came back to me, and obviously it was a time when everything was on edge, the whole world. And we were working on our first test rehearsal with a real audience and a virtual audience of uh, members of a kind of like what you would call like a st street promotion team and our membership clubs, and we, we we were doing a live rehearsal. You know, we'd had already had a few rehearsals, uh, and everyone was, again, excited. We were going to lay out this first episode with uh, the jo jo you know, joy of dance and song. We were going to lay out this first dance with this first, uh, well, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself because I had already got ahead of myself. I told all the t tracking teams on your team that you'd given me access to, to all of the staff uh, that reported to you, but you said to report to me as well. I said, watch that equipment, seismic, uh, whatever, UHV or whatever other signals you were watching. You know, I know you're focused on big ones, Atoll, but focus on the whole world too. And, you know, they explained to me, okay, well, we have these baseline readings, so anything outside of the baseline we'll be ready for. What are you expecting? And I said, probably a blip. Uh, and they said, even a blip uh, we'll notice. And I said, well, what about if someone, you know, drops like a heavy weight? And they said, that's in the baseline. And I said, so something outside of the ordinary would, would and they said, yeah, uh, something non or like a, uh, they said, what are you thinking? I said, well, what if, like, say, what if there was, like, a a big one somewhere we didn't? And then that distracted them. But I said, you know, that we didn't know about or something. 
And they said, yeah, yeah, we're, 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 don't worry. We'll be watching the equipment. We'll be watching the tests, live feeds from the entire planet. Any readings will have results. Uh, if a person sneezes in Siberia, it's in the baseline. But uh, if it was uh, like a world record sneeze, we'd know about it. And, but we'd know about it, uh, and then we'd be able to compare it to previous data and we'd know, oh, okay, that's just a, and I said, really? And they said, yeah, we, we overlay all the testing. And I said, okay, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. And they said, you can trust the data in this case. And they said, but isn't it abnormal times? And they said, well, we've been tracking. Ab they said, yeah, we've had this, uh, this isn't very new. T we have some new technology. Most of this is technology that's been around for a long, long time. And then you pat, one of them patted me on the shoulder, and I said, okay, okay. And so I went to the first rehearsal. And again, this was a smaller audience. We had another rehearsal set up, uh, and we kind of ran through everything that the team had worked on based on the instructions from Planet Zipper and my instructions. And we were just kind of doing a teaser. We weren't doing a full run-through of, uh, of this portion of the episode or the show. But just the beginning of the dance, uh, which was this welcoming motion that, again, everybody could participate in. A few simple set steps, uh, just like you were welcoming someone into the room. And what you would do with your eyes, how you would make your face look to make them feel welcome, how you would open your arms and then back, uh, go forward, then back up to welcome them in, to let them know you see them and you're happy to see them, to say, not just with your eyes and your body, but with your heart uh, and your song, uh, welcome. Uh, come on, you know, it, like it, that was all you were saying, and that's all we were singing. But that uh, there was more layers to it, of course, uh, and that you could use other words. And again, they were translating those internationally. You know, to use to say, "Hey, how can I say welcome? You're special. Welcome, I see you. Uh, welcome, you have value. Oh boy." Uh, and we did that. Now, at the same time, understandably, everyone watching and everyone working was distracted by the events. But we did get caught up, I felt like, because we were just doing this one sequence. And they called it the whole, whole welcome sequence, because I guess that's one of the ways I talk. Uh, and we rapped, and everybody felt some relief, and there was a lot of... Uh, body language and connectedness and, and audience, the, 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 the adults and the children, physical closeness, because I think it had a bit of an escape and, 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 and uh, a catharsis. And now, unfortunately, as a catharsis, we had to return to the real world after. But again, we talked about that and... I ran down to get the test results, and uh, there was none. There was no blips. No, no, I said, no blips, no blurps. They said, no blips, no blurps, no bloops, nothing, nothing. And I said, can you run back through the last 12 minutes? Uh, and they said, we're, yeah, we're, we can do that. Uh, we don't have to run back. Yeah, we, there's nothing. And I said, nothing now. And then they said, we were, they said, well, you want to watch for a while? But that was when, and they again, they explained to me after this happened that even if that the data is, uh, that this wouldn't mask the other data, because even afterwards I say, but is there any other results? I was distracted by what I wanted to see. But that was when Moth Breath also started to fully move. And moth breath uh, started spreading its wings and moving. And so, of course, I was coming through on the tests as well. And uh, now I had my own dedicated people, but even they were distracted by this fact. And there was a big hullabaloo. But they also told me 
there was nothing else happening in the world that was outside of the mean or median or mode. I don't know. So that was uh, a bit of a blow for me because I was confident that I would have something to bring to you. And I had a meeting with you, of course, and you, you, you had already known the, there was no results from the test. You already knew that information. And I could see on your face you had bigger concerns because it was almost like you had already moved on from my project. You weren't shutting the project down, but you were saying uh, you you had moved on to other solutions. And, and uh, you know, the current plan and the debate worldwide was, uh, you, you, you know, there were concerns. You had concerns, and not just about moth breath, but how other parts of the world, the Indies and... Uh, you know, the non-CN uh, collectives were going to act, you know, because there was constant battle over, well, how do we approach this offensively or defensively? And, uh, or do we send moth, you know, when the first big one comes, will someone try to use that to send moth rest somewhere, you know, by planting something? And should we look at, mo like, these big ones, so like, weather patterns? You know, people had already left a lot of the big cities, but not entirely. And, you know, people say, okay, well, we could just temporarily hide underground. Uh, well, what if it's a—so, I don't know, that was the current plan, I guess, uh, but was— uh, it, but, it, you know, all coming real, but also distant. Again, big big ones, Atoll. We all knew how fast moth breath could fly. And while we were in our meeting, moth breath started to fly. And you had given me clearance. So then when they came in and said, yeah, the, uh, you know, how did this start? Why moth breath? That was another concern. What would be next? Uh there, there was other activity at the island, not big ones at activity, but uh, people that praised moth breath in particular, a group of, uh, a large, large group actually, that had moved onto the island secretly and had taken control of uh, a remote part of the atoll that, uh, and they had established a moth breath based belief system. And it, it was believed already at the time. And, and I guess the strange thing was that they were doing some sort of welcoming type song and dance uh, for Moth Breath. Uh, and it was very religious in the sense uh, they were praising and welcoming Moth Breath and chanting and singing. And some of this leaked out to the news, and so then it created another level of uh, public interest and concern. And Moth Breath started to circle uh, a Big One's Atoll, and, and everyone was watching and, and saying, well, where, which way is Moth Breath going to turn? Why is Moth Breath just circling? And meanwhile, you sat me down and you asked me a very straightforward question, like, don't, is there, so there's no secret device. You don't have a serum. You don't have a device. You just have this belief that this is going to work. Uh, please tell me there's a secret serum or secret device. And I said, there's nothing, no, not even a talisman. Uh, and I said, is it talisman or talisman? And you sternly said, there's a big difference between an actual serum or device and a talisman. And I said, I understand that, but I don't have any of those. Uh, all I have is my belief that this is going to work. Uh, and you said, but it didn't work. And I said, well, it was just an initial test. There's something missing. And I think it's just the audience. And you said, no, you don't, you don't believe that. Uh, and I said, you're right, there's something else missing other than the audience. But uh, it's there. It's not a big, it's a piece that's there that we can't, I said, the, the, this is part of the process. Uh, you know, you wrote music. You've, you're a creative person. I said, it's just a matter of finding it. We have an amazing team. 
incredibly creative people and cre incredibly focused. I mean, we're, everyone's distracted too, but that's all a part of it. I, I said, we're going to figure it out. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're have another rehearsal with a lot, like slightly a larger audience set up. And you said, it's pointless though, because no one's going to pay it. And I said, people will, they love, I said, the, the marketing, the characters, the connection and the desire for joy and dance, uh, it doesn't stop. Uh, you know, come on. Uh, and you, you, I said, I, I'm sorry, because I know you have a lot more on your plate than I do. So just don't, don't worry about it. Uh, it's almost like I wanted you to believe so that I could believe or something, but I guess I had to protect you too. I said, well, why don't you, you just let me do, take care of this and uh, I'll trust that it works out. And, uh, you again kind of sternly said, yeah, well, that the whole world was waiting for you to return from planet zipper. We were promised a solution. And, uh, I don't know. And I said, none of us know. I said, it's okay. None of us know. It's not easy. I don't even know. I just trust that this is going to work out, and I don't even know how it's going to work out. And I said, uh, I, but I, 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 I oh yeah, I, I've got to go. And you said, okay. I mean, I don't think we left it that way. It was a little bit more. You had You had to take calls from the world, you know. So we had our second rehearsal, and we were getting ready. And we were going to lay out a little bit more of the dance, you know, welcome. And then the next part of the dance and the song that says, hey, you're important to me. I see you. I'm glad to see you. And, oh, I see something else is going on with you. Uh, like I see you fully. Uh, that the part of the dance was important. And again, it could only be expressed indirectly through dance and song, right? We couldn't, you, I, I guess I'm sharing this on here, the on the nose uh, things that the dance and the song could accomplish without saying. But that was the goal of the steps and even what was supposed to be in the minds of the performers and that would again be reflected and tra translated, I guess, I hope, to the hearts of the children and, and their parents and their families. Hey, welcome. And even some of us were, were, were joking, you know, in the last minute changes, of saying, hey, well, can, can we do this for, for Moth Brat? Uh, and that kind of tore apart the room a little bit, but it showed our looseness so that it didn't, it just tore apart in the moment of uh, debating about it because, uh, I don't know. And, and I decided to watch, uh, up in the production room, uh, I guess because I wanted, uh, I had had them set up a station for the person running the tests and I wanted to see the tests at the same time that were tracking in any, anything in the world. Uh, and then as we got closer to getting ready, to roll, that's when moth breath's behavior changed. And moth breath started using moth, moth breath, moth breath, uh, which was like a silk breath, uh, to seal up all the other big ones, uh, one by one, sealing them in silk. Uh, and Everybody being dismayed, you calling and saying, is this you? And I said, no, 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 no. We, we, uh, there's no theories that say that we can control the behavior of the big ones from Planet Sipper or that our, be you know, this project, uh, you know, you kept calling it big emojis. Uh, and, and again, that was part of, anyway. But big emojis was just one of the terms on the show. So everybody was a bit elated and confused and uh, a little bit concerned. And again, then scientists were being called, well, okay, what does this mean? Like, uh, 
Uh, will this wake? What is? We don't know what Mothra is trying to accomplish. Uh, maybe it's a quest for dominance. This could mean Mothra is going to stay there. And uh, this could extend their hibernation because, again, they'll be wrapped. It'll be a bit like uh, swaddling a baby. Then, you know, there's point-counterpoint type stuff. But I think a lot of the feeling everyone was feeling was that it was uh, a combination of surprise, uh, elation, relief, uh, and hope. Uh, maybe Moth Breast a hero, even people started to posit. Who were, maybe these people were right that were praising Moth Breath. Now, meanwhile, not every human being or leader was acting in the, in the same way you were. So there were people trying to use this to their advantage, and one particular group had sent out a ship uh, full of material that would attract a big one, and they were planning on sending it to a port of another nation they weren't allied with. And uh, this is just something we know in retrospect, or I know in retrospect, but we went through with... uh, rehearsal now uh, the rehearsal went a lot like the goals we ran a little bit longer I mean didn't yield any results and I was watching the whole time and the production thing is like over the studio right uh, I don't know if, if, if uh, well you're familiar with it it's like a, a dark room with kind of like a two-way window, a mirror, you know, you can't see in from the outside. But when you're standing there, you know, there's the reflections of the screens behind you, particularly the screen for the tests and the tracking, the seismic and all that was uh, right next to me. And so it created a reflection. And I remember as I saw and heard that there was no results, but that the, the the performance seemed to be going really good. The children and their families seemed to be enjoying it. It, uh, it, uh, I caught my own reflection in uh, staring, and instead of looking into the studio, I was looking in my own eyes, and I was seeing uh, doubt. Uh, I was seeing tiredness. I was seeing a weariness uh, because I knew that that I, mean, I don't know. While everybody else was hoping this was for the best day, I wasn't so sure. When big ones are involved, uh, and for my time on Planet Zipper, I just said, there's got to be something more to this. Uh, and also was just disappointed. There was no clear results and nothing. No blips, no blurps, no bloops. And my shoulders sagged. And, and Now, again, no one else on the team really knew that... Uh, uh, they they might have been confused or they thought that because I was the astronaut, uh, you know, I was concerned with Moth Breath and Big Ones Island. They never made the connection uh, that, uh, you know, they thought they were just doing their job, creating something fun for for, for everyone to enjoy. Like, that, that is, you know, the, the goal of people creating stuff sometimes or one of their goals, uh, and they were succeeding, but again, it wasn't quite there. And not only did I know it, uh, the team knew it. Now they didn't have the same. So we met again and we went over, how did the rehearsal go? People could see I was d- d- down and, you know, they said, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. And they were brainstorming and you called me. And I said, I have to step out uh, and talk to the president of the world. Uh, and everyone had a laugh. Uh, but they knew, you know. And again, sometimes people say, why are you involved in this project? Uh, that's really, and I, yeah, I said, well, this is, uh, the children of the world are the most important resource we have, of course. Uh, and, I, and they said, well, I said, what am I going to do? I'm just an astronaut. Uh and they said, but then you bring, and they said, you know, that stuff's confidential. I can't talk about it. But anyway, I went and I met with you again. And we talked and you said, you see, you've seen, we've been following what's happening. I know there's no results from your tests there. 
And I said, yeah, and I said, following what's happening. And you said, what do you think? And I said, well, I don't know what to think. I know, I don't feel good. I feel, I don't feel worse about it, but I don't feel good about it. And you said, did you notice anything else? And I said, yeah, there seems to be a large group of, uh, uh, and she said, yeah, there's actually, they're not just on the atoll, you know, they have, uh, they're, they're operating and, and, uh, controlling, uh, an Indian nation or like they moved into a city that like a lot of people left. And, uh, she said, yeah, they're, they're like, uh, they b- believe in moth breath. And she said, what else? And I said, well, yeah, they're, they're singing and dancing and, uh. He said, that's always kind of been a, a theory that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, you see, we've seen it uh, in the past with the big ones. Uh, you know, it's just like a human being that people get caught up in a giant figure. And we've never had any conclusive thing about the singing and the dancing. Uh, and she said, well, they said that they're the ones controlling moth breath uh, do you think that's possible and i said i don't know if it's possible i don't think so nothing on planet zipper i said you, you could uh i could see that they could have woken moth breath up first with their singing and their dancing and she said but there's something hypnotic to it right and i said yeah i said but why are you saying that and she said well they said uh they said that they're making demands and they're saying without the demands uh, that moth breath will, uh, moth breath is going to be the only big one and they control moth breath. And I said, interesting. And I, I said, do they have any proof of that? And you, you said, yeah, moth breath, I don't know if you heard, but moth breath left a uh, big one's atoll and is headed out to the sea. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. Where, which direction? And you said, it's pretty clear from, you know, our intelligence that uh, there's a ship uh, full of uh, spent material. And it's in the middle of the sea. It's heading to a port. Uh, and you said it came from, you know, this other co- cooperative uh, group, uh and, you know, they're going to plant it in the port, and uh, Mothbrust is headed to the ship. It's, we, we expect that's where Mothbrust is, he- is headed, and we'll get there while the ship is still in the middle of the ocean. Uh, but also the the, the, the group, that, the Mothbrethians, uh, they said that was what would happen. And that if we don't follow, you know, what they want, which is pretty, uh, they said, you know, we got to supply stuff for moth breath to consume and uh, a lot of other resources, resources we need, if they want sent uh, uh, to the, uh, the the nation that they're, they're controlling and the city they're controlling. And do you think that's possible? And I said, well, it sounds like it, it could be po- I don't think it's probable, but it could be possible. But I don't understand how they would communicate with, like, uh, and he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I realize you're going to kind of th- throw this back at me, but what if uh, they're behaving away and they want moth breath to behave away or they want you to think they're in control? But we guess they could have woken Moth Breath up first. Uh, but if you were Moth Breath and you woke up, wouldn't you behave? Wouldn't these be the same steps you would take? And you said, what do you mean? And I said, well, okay, so you're Moth Breath. You wake up, you see the other big ones. You, you fly to get your wings back in order. Then you see the other big ones slumbering. Uh, rivals of yours so you seal them up uh, you would do that uh even if someone was seeing you know m- maybe they're helping energize you, you know and then the next thing you would do is uh, get your bearings and if you detected uh 
somewhere motion and spent material that attracts you, however that works with the big ones, uh, some sort of part of their limbic system, you would be guided towards there by your nature. So it doesn't seem to me uh, that... uh, like that, they're necessarily in control of moth breasts, uh, but they could be. They could be. And then you said, "Well, what would moth breasts do next?" I said, "Well, moth breasts would go to the ship. I don't know what moth breasts would do, but uh, consume the ship, take the ship, seal the ship, uh, and then what?" You said, and then I said, "Well, either return to Big One's Island or follow the trail. The ship will leave a clear trail for a Big One to follow." I don't know if that whoever sent it out thought of that, uh, but if they didn't think about it, uh, they're gonna uh, moth breath. That's where moth, moth breath will go next. And uh, you said, "Okay, well, why don't you get back to your rehearsal then?" Uh, I know your show goes live very soon. And you were right, and we went back in the meeting, and I said, "Okay, how's everybody feeling?" Uh, and, you know, they, you were asking for, everybody was concerned about uh, moth breath uh, and uh, wanted me to answer questions. I said, okay, I think it's going to work out. Uh, do you think that, like, well, they're in control of moth breath? Uh, everything had been on the news. And I said, let's focus on what's missing from the show. And, uh, you know, we have all this, these steps, uh, but something's clearly missing in our welcome, welcome, so glad to see you, uh, thing. And, uh, I said, what, what are the problems that, what is missing? And a couple ideas came up, uh, contrary, contrary ideas, uh, from different staff members, which was amazing. And this was an all staff meeting. It wasn't just the writers. And, uh, someone said, I think that, uh, one thing that's missing is, uh, who's dancing and who's singing. Right now we have, uh, human performers, but the children were introduced to the show through the serial characters and one of the, and, and the toys and all these other things, uh, and I feel like we've tried to humanize the show too much. Uh, and then we're just going to run these cartoons or animated shows uh, between the variety segments with humans. And I feel like that's missing. And I said, so you're saying we're missing a spice friend? Because, yeah, again, we'd gone to this big emojis idea. With, you know, with the Spice Friends being just a, a side thing. You know, it made sense. Big ones, big emojis. It was the whole goal of the show. And then I thought about looking at myself, uh, and I said, wait one second. Uh, yeah, give me a second here to process what you're saying. Everyone process what she's saying for a second uh, before I step on it. uh and then we can ask more questions. And I know there's someone else with a pending idea. But yeah, I was thinking about looking at my own eyes uh, and looking through to the audience at the same time. And I was seeing my tiredness. And I was kind of seeing beyond it, too. And I said, okay. Okay, I hear what you're saying. So we're missing one of the Spice Friends. And you said, yes, we're missing one of the Spice Friends. And I said, yeah, now we just got to figure out if the Spice Friend is the one seeing or being seen. And you said, yes, uh, this this writer uh, did. And then someone from another department said, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, I hear what, what they're saying. But... Uh, what about what everybody's seeing right now? And I said, what's that? And you said, moth breath. Uh, and you said, oh, okay. What you're saying is, uh, okay. 
So everybody is seeing moth breath in, in their thoughts, in their minds, so their feelings, their big emojis about moth breath. But we're just talking about the feelings. So we're both being not metaphorical enough and too metaphorical is kind of what you're saying, if, if I'm correct. Like, uh, we're being, we're not talking about the moth breath in the room. And we started to brainstorm. Okay, so who, who, what spice friend should we should be here? What are the characteristics of the different spice friends? What is the best spice friend to, to be there? And that was a writer's area of expertise. Uh, and then who is seeing who? And I said, well, the audience has to be the one seeing. They're dancing and seeing. And he said, oh, okay, you're right. Because I said, you know, we went back and forth. Should the spice friend be the one leading the dance and being the one? We're seeing things through the spice friend's eyes. And then it just flowed from there, you know, because he said, of course, well, this is our new show. Again, we, we called costume and again, the, the, the team and the set dressers, everyone started working together because we didn't have. A not, like a non-animated version of a spice friend in this particular spice friend. And we said, okay, well, okay, so we're, we're working on that. So we're dancing and we're welcoming the spice friend, just like a natural process of we're rewriting the episode. Of course, okay, we're welcoming the spice friend. And then we said, okay, well, what about the next thing? Uh, so the spice friend is, uh, we can't ignore the fact that everybody's thinking about moth breath. Uh, even the spice friend probably is. And this is when we went to, you know, the great, great influences of us, uh, you know, Henson, Muppets, Sesame Street, uh, CTW, all these great puppeteers uh, throughout human history. I mean, you know, beyond those names, but just those were some of the names that came up with, uh, was, uh, well, we could have a puppet behind the Spice Friend, a small, in the distance version of Moth Breath flying around, uh, just uh, behind uh, the Spice Friend. So when the child, then the child can, then that is the right metaphor. Oh, I'm also, I'm not just welcoming the Spice Friend. I'm seeing beyond it to uh, what we're both thinking about, which is moss breath and welcoming those feelings too. And uh, I guess I, I uh, find myself uh, getting tired talking about this, but so we went through with it. Uh, and we did the dance. Uh, we had the show. We had someone dressed uh, as the spice friend. I mean, we just finished. I'm, I'm waiting here. This is why I'm recording this is to try to distract myself. I feel so tired because I'm waiting. I sent the tester out. I said, I'll contact you afterwards. Uh, now, meanwhile, as we were getting ready to air, Moth Breath was getting closer and closer to the ship. Uh, and so we decided to delay. And then Moth Breath picked up the ship and headed as I had predicted, uh, towards, towards this cooperative group that had sent the ship out, uh, but that would take a while. So then we went to air and we did the dance and we welcomed this spice friend in, we welcomed in the, 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 the feelings and we saw the, the spice friend with the joy in, in dance, uh, was thinking about moth breath and so much more. And we completed the rest of what we had set out, which I kind of didn't, which is like, hey, I'm here to help you with that. Uh, and then we moved into a more active uh, part of the show, which, again, was not my, you know, that's handled by experts. And I said, hey, well, like, you know, a different part of the program. But the song and the dance to me, uh, and as you, you know, that in the animated portion afterwards, which was unrelated, which was pre-produced, but it featured this spice friend, uh, an adventure, uh, the one we had welcomed in. Well, and it was an adventure with similar feelings and those kind of things to explore and, and explore being 
But anyway, it went great. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved the dance quickly. We were seeing people posting versions of them singing and dancing. And maybe some people were getting confused with the heroism that Moth Breath was a hero because not everybody had the whole story. Now, meanwhile, even people in this uh, this other uh, group, 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 affiliated group, uh, there's people there. And, you know, they, it wasn't their fault that their leaders had sent this ship out. And now Moth Breath was approaching with this ship. Uh, quickly, everybody figured it out. Uh, and uh, they had the same feelings that the, the other children of the world and the parents and the adults of the world had. Uh, and that's when you, you like, uh, it, like uh, I think, uh, wait a second, let me pause this recording. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll I'll stop recording. But there's reports uh, that rising from the sea is uh, uh, you know there was a blip, there was a bloop, and there was a blurp. Uh, that was the first report I got. Uh, and then you know, as we know, Moth Breast still has like a few hours till it reach it makes landfall. Uh, Rising from the shores of this other uh, uh, affiliated, uh, this this other country full of people is a giant, smiling, cinnamon stick being. Uh, a big one, but it has big eyes and a big smile, and it's doing the welcoming dance. Uh, and no one can believe it. You couldn't believe it. You called me... Uh, we don't know what's going to happen next, but we know that uh, that it worked, uh, that we manifested uh, our our own spice friend. And, and, I, and I can, you know, of course, you're like, well, what if the spice friend turns around and starts stepping on the city? And I say, well, then we'll kind of be, we won't do it again. Uh, we won't be in that, maybe, I said, oh. That's, that'd be unfortunate, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Spice Friend is going to wait and, and deter Moth Breath and, and help everybody. But uh, everybody already feels a bit better because they're doing that dance. Uh, and they're saying, welcome. I see you. G- got those feelings about Moth Breath. Uh, I can see that. Uh, I'm dancing here to welcome you in and singing to you because I know how it feels. Uh and I'd like to help you. So I'm going to try to rest uh, while we wait uh, for landfall. And uh, I'm sure I'll be recording an update soon. Thanks for listening. All right. I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night to Gary, not Jim, and Nikki. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Scott, Dave, and Angie. Thanks, 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 and good night to Brandy. Hannah and Nicholas, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night to Ashley, Woozy, and Peter. Thanks, thanks, and good night to P337R, Liza, and Sam. Thanks, 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 and good night to Ed, Carolina, and Michelle. Thanks, 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 and good night to Joanna, Emily, and Janice. Thanks, 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 and good night to Sally. Michaela and Connor. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night to Jennifer, Caitlin, and Allison. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night to Kristen, Brandy, and Kayla. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night to Johnny, Heidi, and Teresa. And thanks. Thanks. Good night to Hannah, Jennifer, and Nick. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night, everybody. A uh, real reason I thank those people are because I'm really thankful. Like the show is able to be free for everybody on all platforms with all the extra content we have in the feed. I think we're getting close to 400. I think the last time I looked was 370 maybe, uh, which is really cool. And uh, that's because of the people that support the show on Patreon and those who support the sponsors. So I really appreciate uh, 
all the support. You can also support the show for free. Join our referral program. Spread the word about the podcast, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. And, uh, you know, adding the episodes back in the feed has been one of my goals. And these sleepy end of the show sponsors are part of that. Thanks and good night.